you have you you mix your primers you d in the PCR tubes with the uh, DNA that's a human genome uh, we also call this template. So template whose copy is to be prepared uh, in, a, in a PCR tube. So you have template, that's a human genome. You have added primers, but primers alone are not enough. Remember the DNA replication. Once primase adds primers, DNA polymerase comes and replicates the DNA or make complementary copies. Now, we are going to now, for simplicity, we are just going to draw our template like this. Of course, it's a, in a chromosomal context. The template is much more longer. Okay. This is the region of DNA which we want to amplify in millions of copies. We have added primers and the next thing we need is a polymerase. Now you remember we heated DNA at 95 degrees Celsius and the template denatured in two single-stranded molecules. When we will heat DNA at 95 degrees Celsius, if you have proteins there, they will get denatured. And that was the discovery which Kerry Mullis uh, uh, made, that you know, in order to automate the whole process of uh, amplification of DNA, we need a polymerase which is resistant to heat. And he came up with the idea that from Thermus sequitus, uh, an extremophile, a bacteria which lives in really temperatures above 75 degrees Celsius, its normal living temperature is 75. Imagine our living temperature is 37. We will be burned. We will be dead at 75. But he thought of the idea that, you know, in, in uh, organisms which live in hot springs, in which, which normally divide uh, uh, in these uh, hot temperatures or extreme temperatures, they must be having proteins which resist uh, these temperatures. And then he thought of using uh, DNA polymerase from this bacteria which is called Thermus sequitus, and in uh, labs the short form is called TAC polymerase. So polymerase we use in PCRs normally is TAC, Thermus sequitus, T for Thermus and sequitus. Uh, the specific epithet of that bacteria and the beauty of that polymerase is that when you heat PCR tube at 95 degrees Celsius it does not get denatured it, for it's, it's a normal temperature. You cool down the uh, temperature to let's say uh, between 55 degrees Celsius to 60 and this temperature is called annealing temperature. Annealing temperature is the temperature which will allow our PCR primers, these ones, annealing temperature will help because the temperature is low enough that you know our one of the primer, let's say ATG, CAG, we design, will bind to its complementary sequence. And then the second primer, which was GTG, TAA, on this side, is going to bind. Remember the orientation of this top strand was 5 to 3. Annealing temperature allows primers to recognize complementary sequence and binds to specific sequence. And you know, now these primers, they have free three prime hydroxyl group. Now, if you want to synthesize copy of this DNA, 
what do you need? In addition to polymerase, you need nucleotides. And these nucleotides we have in the PCR mix. So template, primers, polymerase, and nucleotides. These are nucleotide triphosphates. Okay. The adenosine triphosphate, the uh, cytosine, guanine, uh, thiamine, etc. So these four are an ample amount. And the next thing is you raise the temperature now to 72 degrees Celsius and we call this extension. Now what will happen? The polymerase will come and bind here. That polymerase will come and bind and it will start synthesizing copy of this complete strand on both sides. The nucleotides, complementary nucleotides are added and the end result is like synthesis of a complementary strand. So we give, let's say, 30 seconds at 95, 30 seconds, 55 degree to 60 uh, degree Celsius, and then the extension time is proportional to the length of the DNA to be amplified. Rule of thumb is one minute for one KB. Let's say we have 500 base pairs to be amplified. So we'll say 30 seconds. This is one PCR cycle. Polymerase, this is polymerase, chain reaction, because now we can tell the machine to repeat this cycle. Heating, this heating is called, 95 is called denaturation temperature. You denature DNA into single strands. Denature, annealing, extension. 95 for 30, 55 or 60 for 30 seconds, 72 for 30. What will happen, whatever DNA so in the next, this is the first round. What will happen now? Now you have two strands of DNA. Now these two will undergo denaturation. This will also go under denaturation. Annealing machine will cool down 55 degrees Celsius to, and again these primers they will come and bind. So your forward primer is going to bind here, your reverse primer is going to come and bind here, forward here, reverse here. What is going to happen? At 72 degrees Celsius, complete new strand is made. So you tell the machine to have 35 cycles or 40 cycles or 30 cycles and you can imagine if you have, you started with 100,000 molecules of your template exponentially you will amplify after 30 cycles and you will have a lot of DNA. We call this chain reaction because denaturation annealing extension, denaturation annealing extension, it's going in a cycle again and again. DNA is getting denatured, primers are coming and binding, polymerase is extending in the extension phase and then 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds and again denaturation. So after the whole 35 cycles, you will have massive amount of DNA. If you start from let's say few nanograms, you will have micrograms of DNA. Okay. So that is the basic concept of PCR. We are soon going to use in the next uh, lecture, next part of this lecture, we are going to use PCR for cloning of a gene and you will enjoy that cloning because we'll clone uh, COVID-19 spike gene. Okay, stay tuned.